England's National Health Service is suspending the prescription of puberty blockers to kids at the country's gender health clinics, marking a huge shift in the country's access to gender-affirming care. The NHS released a new policy this week that claims that the medications, which, you know, do what they say on the tin and pause the development of secondary sex characteristics in young people, should only be given as part of research trials or in, quote, exceptional circumstances. And the policy changes follow an independent review led by the pediatrician Dr. Hilary Cass, who concluded that there was, quote, insufficient evidence of what happens to youth who are prescribed puberty blockers. But Cass's findings run counter to the overwhelming medical consensus from doctors and organizations around the world, including the American Medical Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics, that puberty blockers are not only safe, but can be life-saving for trans and gender diverse people. And like, puberty blockers have been prescribed to both trans and cis teens since like, the 80s. The medications most often used as puberty blockers are called gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GRH, analogs. Basically, they stop the body from making testosterone or estrogen for the period of time that the medication is taken, and therefore slow down the development of characteristics like body and facial hair or breasts and menstruation. And a 2020 study in the journal Pediatrics found that access to puberty suppression during adolescence was associated with reduced odds of lifetime suicidal ideation among transgender people. And access to puberty blockers when they're younger can often mean trans folks don't need as extensive or invasive other forms of care, such as surgery later in life. And let's be clear, it's not like clinics in the UK have been handing out this medication like candy up until this point. According to the BBC, less than 100 young people in England are currently on puberty blockers prescribed by the NHS. And those people will be permitted to continue their treatment under the new policy. But how small that number is is largely due to how hard it's already been to get gender-affirming care in the UK. The country's healthcare system is already a bit of a shit show, with wait times ranging upwards of a decade for certain gender-affirming services. And many trans advocates in the country have pointed out how long wait times at gender clinics for care like puberty blockers has already essentially served as a de facto ban. Still, the new NHS policy means any gender diversity youth seeking to start puberty blockers will have to resort to private clinics, and the often steep costs and further wait times associated with them. But even that could soon be restricted. Former British Prime Minister Liz Truss has drafted a bill that would outright ban the use of puberty blockers in both private practices and the NHS. And coupled with this new NHS policy, this could provide a dangerous precedent for other countries around the world.